Hello, I'm Kasia Madeira with BBC World News. Our top stories. Now, we're getting breaking news from France related to a possible advanced stage plot to attack France. The French Interior Minister Bernard Cazeneuve said that police have arrested a suspect in the Paris area in the neighborhood northwest of Paris. Uh, they're saying that this had no tangible evidence linking this particular plot to either the attacks in Paris or those attacks in Brussels that we were just hearing about, but just saying the... French Interior Minister saying that police have arrested a suspect in the Paris area who was in the advanced stages of a plot to stage an attack in France. We'll, of course, continue to monitor this breaking news and develop it for you. Now, let's just remind you of the breaking news that we've been getting in the past half hour from France. We're being told by the French Interior Minister Bernard Cazeneuve that uh, apparently police have arrested a suspect in the Paris area, or rather uh, just slightly northwest of Paris, a uh, neighborhood uh, which has been named as Argentoy, uh, and that a, the suspect was in the advanced stages of a plot to stage an attack in France. So breaking news there. Let's go back to Brussels, where, of course, uh, those two attacks, suicide attacks, took place on Tuesday. Our Europe editor joins us now. Uh, Katia Adler, of course, people there in mourning, but so many questions about the security operation in Belgium. Katia Adler, our Europe editor, thank you very much. Of course, we'll continue to monitor that breaking news from France. Thanks for watching BBC World News. Back now to our top story, the Syrian peace talks getting underway in Geneva. We know from our correspondent Imogen folks that a Syrian government representative has arrived, but no opposition member yet. Michael Bristow with that story. Well, let's go to some other stories that we're following. Now there's much more to come here on BBC World News, including... Let's go back to our main story. Uh, let's return to The Hague and our correspondent, Alan Little, who's been following the trial for us. Alan, this has taken a long time. Has justice, justice finally been done in this case, do you think? Now, it was two years ago that the Nigerian militant group Boko Haram started using female suicide bombers. Now, girls as young as 12 have been given explosive belts and sent to murder civilians. It stands to reason that we don't hear from them, but the BBC's Anne Soy has managed to speak to one teenager who managed to escape Boko Haram's clutches after she was chosen for a suicide mission. Her name and voice have been changed to protect her identity. Hello, welcome to BBC World News. I'm Martine Dennis. These are our top stories this morning. First this morning, we go to Be Beirut, where a former Lebanese cabinet minister has been killed in a big bomb explosion that uh, has shaken downtown Beirut. I think we can see the latest pictures now. We've got some pictures that we can show you uh, w of a column of smoke, billowing black smoke, as I say, in downtown Beirut. Mohammed Shatta was a former minister. Now we can go live to Beirut, the Lebanese capital, where, as we've been reporting, within the last hour and a half or so, a big explosion has taken place. It's the target, apparently, the convoy of former Lebanese minister Mohamed Shatta. Our correspondent, Karine Torbe, is there. Karine, tell us what you know. All right, for now, Karine, thank you very much indeed. Live in Beirut, Karine Torbe, our correspondent. And of course, Karine and the team will continue to bring you the very latest, the more information becomes available about that huge explosion in downtown Beirut, in which a former minister was killed. Lots more to come. Apart from the very latest from Beirut, we're going to go on board a warship. This morning's breaking news coming from Beirut in Lebanon, where a big bomb has gone off, killing a former cabinet minister. His name, Mohamed Shatta. He and four other people, it's thought, were killed in this explosion. You're with BBC World News. And staying with uh, Lebanon, the president there, Michael Suleiman, says that Saudi Arabia is giving the Lebanese army $3 billion in aid. The seven times Formula One world champion Michael Schumacher has been flown to hospital in Grenoble after a skiing accident in the French Alps. He was skiing off piste with his teenage son when the accident happened. Well, we can get the very latest now from Paris, our correspondent Hugh mm. Schofield. Very latest here on BBC World News. Headlines are next. So, can the FBI definitively blame North Korea for the hackings? Caroline Balin is a cybersecurity analyst at Chatham House and she says that the US might know more than it's letting on. 
Let's catch up a couple more stories for you. Fart gorillas in Colombia. Just an incredible story there. Don't forget to get a hold of me and the rest of the BBC News team on Twitter. I'm at Daniela Retortos. An Egypt airplane flying overnight from Paris to Cairo has disappeared from radar screens and fears are growing that it's crashed into the sea. At least 30 of the passengers were Egyptians. Uh, it's not easy pulling together precise details on this. Our news correspondent, Will Ross, is with me now. Will, we're getting information from the Greek authorities, the Egyptian authorities and the French authorities. Not a lot of it, frankly, tallying to perfection at exactly. this point. I, th 